So I'm back at it again, having to fix more uh, issues with this mini lathe. The first few minutes of this video are going to be the symptoms that I've been having. Just to illustrate how it acts in case somebody else finds themselves with the same problems. The first issue is this pulsing action, which is really just an adjustment on the controller board. This next part of the video illustrates the real problem that I've been having of very sporadic speed uh, variations as well as it's stalling. Um, this was completely unpredictable and obviously very difficult to machine anything when it's acting like this. I did find some troubleshooting guides online which I'll link below and they only covered two problems. Uh, one, it doesn't turn on, so it's not getting any power. And two, there's no speed control. So no matter what the speed is set at, it just runs at full speed all the time. Um, unfortunately, neither of these are the problems that I was having, so the troubleshooting guide wasn't very much help. Putting a voltmeter on the output to the motor shows really sporadic voltage gains and drops uh, to the motor, which suggests that it might not be the motor that's having the problem, it's probably the controller. Sometimes it worked flawlessly though, and this is exactly what I was looking for. Uh, you could definitely machine with this. So let's find the problem. As a side note, make sure you remove the power before touching any of these electronics. Uh, there are pretty high voltages involved and they could potentially be dangerous. So if you're not comfortable doing this, I'll also link a really nice guy I found who fixes these boards. Um, he helped me diagnose it and it would be great if you could support him as well. Troubleshooting the motor can be done by powering it with a 9 volt battery by connecting it to these this blue and white wire. If it turns and it doesn't seem like it's having a problem, it's likely good. If it doesn't, then there's probably a problem. Just remember to reconnect them in the right order or your forward and reverse switch will be backwards. Also be careful when removing these clips so you don't damage the solder joints holding on the tab. Uh, you can use something sharp to unclip them by pushing it into that little hole in the front. Also remember where all the wires go. I'll link a picture of how they're set up below for those who forgot. I went ahead and ordered some new solder and a new soldering iron since the stuff that I had wasn't quite up to the job of soldering these small electronics. The soldering iron I ordered has a really nice small tip and it's removable so you can swap it out with a variety of other tips they included. Uh, I really like this design. It's nice and easy.
It's also nice that the soldering iron has a temperature control on it. The only solder I had was way too big for this application, so I ordered some that was a lot thinner and will be a lot easier to control when doing any soldering. Now to find the problem. These two on the left are SCRs and probably the issue if you don't have speed control. These other three are just diodes. Be careful not to lose any of the thermal paper or plastic washers on the screws. So it's no wonder I was having a problem. Uh, they forgot to solder everything. Uh, this component was just completely unsoldered, and of course that would be an issue. Um, this pin goes to a big resistor, and this is referred to as a horsepower resistor on this board. Normally on the non-Chinese clone versions of these boards, there are two sockets to be able to plug in interchangeable horsepower resistors. The reason for this is so the same board can be used for a wide variety of products. Simply switch out the resistor for the required application and you can use it. It also has a warning label that says plug-in horsepower resistor must be installed for this product to operate. So the fact that that wasn't soldered would definitely have an impact on how well it would work, and it clearly did. Now to fix it. Uh, there's a protective coating on this board that needs to be removed to get the solder to stick well. I just kept scraping until I saw raw metal underneath, but you have to be careful not to scrape too much or you'll scrape the foil right off the board. I followed that up with an extra small piece of sandpaper to clean off the pin in case any of that protective coating was on the pin. And then finally wiped it down with some just simple rubbing alcohol to clean it up. The soldering iron has a little light to tell you it's plugged in, which is kind of nice. And I also set the temperature around 325 degrees C. I could have gone a little warmer though. Make sure not to forget the thermal paper or you'll risk the SCRs overheating and then you will end up with speed problems, so be sure to put those back in. You'll notice on the board there are four adjustable potentiometers labeled MAX, MIN, IR, and CL. The MAX one can be used to adjust the max speed of the motor. The MIN one can be used to adjust the minimum speed. This is referred to as the voltage compensation pin. And then there's a current limit. If you have a pulsing problem, just dial this one down a little bit and it should correct it. 
Now it's time to do a quick test before putting it all back together and let's see if it works. At this point the video is over and the rest of the video is going to be reassembly and then turning a test piece to make sure it works. Uh, I hope this helps somebody and if you liked it please like and subscribe and I'll be posting more videos in the future. So thanks for watching.